In our second episode today, we're going to go over the traditional treatments for pain, and I'm going to show how to design pain management programs. So let's cue up the music and get going. Now let's talk briefly about the medical approach to pain. I'm going to start off with the use of pain medicine. Now let's have a look at the use of short versus long-acting pain control. Okay, so let's have a quick look at pain. Now, if we look at a day, what we're going to do is we're going to see a baseline level of pain and then we're going to see a couple of spikes, which can come with some activity. Now, there are two ways that we can treat this. One is with short-acting narcotics, such as hydrocodone. Now, if you look at hydrocodone, it lasts about four hours. So what you would have to do is basically take six doses to cover yourself for 24 hours. This is not very practical because with hydrocodone and six doses of it, you're going to have close to two grams of Tylenol or acetaminophen. That's a very toxic medicine to your liver. Now, another way that we can do it is we can use a longer acting medicine. The one that I particularly like is methadone, and I'll give you some reasons for that in a moment. But basically, it has got the same type of pain control that hydrocodone does, except it lasts a couple times longer. Now, methadone is kind of a cool medicine. First, it's extraordinarily inexpensive. And second, it has no secondary effects. For example, um, some medications, if you, if you take them, they have a pain-killing effect to begin with. And then as they go through your liver, they're converted into something else that has a pain-killing effect. So you have to worry about basically dosing them with two different drugs at once. But let's see how we can combine these two to get a little better pain control. So what we'll do is we'll basically take our day, and we've got our baseline pain, and we've got a couple of spikes. And what we're going to do so we're going to give somebody a longer acting medicine. To cover these baseline pains, and then we can use the short acting medicine. To cover the spikes. Now. With methadone. The maximum dose of that that's really effective is about 30 milligrams a day. So what I would typically do is I would give 5 milligrams, 5 milligrams, and 5 milligrams. Then if we look at the hydrocodone preparations, those are generally 5 or 10 milligrams per dose, plus 325 milligrams of Tylenol. I'd start off with a 5, or I'd give them a 10 and have them cut it in half and take half of one to cover these spikes. And I always thought that was a very elegant way of doing this. Now, a couple of things that you should think about. One is minimal meds, two, 50% reduction in pain is what you're shooting for. And three, no more than three doses of short acting narcotics per day. I don't know how many people came in to me on four to six doses of Norco every single day. 
And a lot of their doctors will say, well, I don't have a special license to use methadone. Methadone is a pain medicine. The special license that you need to use methadone is when you're doing it for maintenance therapy and addiction. You can use methadone to treat pain all day long. And I would typically give five or uh, 10 milligram tabs. And I do it up to three times a day. No more. In my practice, if you looked at my pain management patients, 95% were covered with this regime of three time a day methadone and no more than maybe two hydrocodones. So it's really not that difficult. Now there's another thing that I wanted to show you about pain medicine. A lot of people seem to think that as the dose goes up, if you look at the pain, it's going to follow a pattern like that. And that kind of makes sense. If you start off with zero and you have a lot of pain, as you add more medicine to it, you would think that the pain goes down. But that's not really what happens. What happens is this. So you start off at zero, you come on out, and then you start getting an effective dose, and your pain comes down. And then as the dose goes back up, your pain can actually come back even more than when you started. This is called narcotic-induced hyperalgia. Now the key to this is find the sweet spot right there. So I had a lot of patients that came on in and they were over here. So what I did was I started weaning them down on their medicines, maybe about 10% a month. That way there they don't run into problems with the withdrawal beyond maybe feeling eh, a little fluish, you know, every time I reduced them. But, but their pain would go down. So as I backed them down, what I would do is I'd wait until I got the minimum amount of pain and then if I backed them down any further and their pain went up a little bit, I knew that I had just passed it, so I brought them back to here. There's an art to doing good pain management. And remember, minimal meds. Now there's one other thing I wanna talk about. Why is it that if you look at medicines like Percocet and Vicodin and Norco, they always have Tylenol in them. Now the reason for that is that if you take a narcotic, there's a certain amount you have to use to get pain relief. So let's say that's 10. We'll just use that as a number. If you look at a Tylenol-like medicine or Motrin, which is called a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, even if you give the maximum dose, you might get incomplete pain relief. However, if you combine them and use the narcotic and non-steroidal and go to pain relief, you may be at a five on your narcotic and you may be on a relatively minor dose of a non-steroidal. The reason being is you need a big dose of narcotic to get a big effect. You need an even bigger dose of a non-steroidal to get a big effect. But if you go half and half, you have small dose, small side effect, but you get the same big effect the Tylenol or the Motrin boosts the effect of the narcotic, so you need less of it. Now just to reiterate, do not use short-acting pain medicines for long-acting pain. Use a combination therapy and tailor it, not only to match the characteristics of the pain, but address the cause of the pain. I'm a big believer in the synergistic use of narcotic and non-narcotic pain medicines. Now there are a couple of other classes of medicines that we can use in addition to or instead of the non-steroidals. 
The first one is anti-seizure medicines like Neurotin and Lyrica. These are very good to potentiate the narcotics and they're also extremely effective in neuropathic pain like diabetic neuropathy. Now another set of pain medicines that we can use is the antidepressants. Not only do these help with the pain, they also help with the suffering. And recall that on most antidepressants, you need to take them for a full month before you can determine if they're working. Well, I want to thank you for joining me again for our chronic pain series. Today, we went over the traditional treatments for pain management. And in our next episode, our final episode on chronic pain, we'll go over some of the non-traditional care for chronic pain. So I hope you'll join me, and we'll see you then. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Hey guys, make sure you hit that little like and subscribe button down there. I'd really like to have you on Team Bob, and that's a great way to support the channel if you'd like to see more programming like this. We'll see you soon.